Welcome to St. Margaret. We especially greet all visitors and guests who are with us to share in today's liturgy. We ask that you please silence all cell phones and electronic devices. The readings for today's Mass can be found on page 1132 of the Gather Hymnal. That's page number 1132. The second collection this weekend is for the Building and Maintenance Fund. This evening's Mass is being offered for Don Bankston, Philip Brabham, Anastasia Brogy, Karen Chimay, Veronica Chenier, Jack Clements, Homer Gaspar, Fred Goche, Carl Hunter, Mary William and Joel Juhas, Francis Cronlich, Vernon and Dorothy Landry, Roy and Ada LeBlanc, Ray J. Louvier, Mike Michon, William T. O'Brien III, Lynette Piffner, Peter J. and Elizabeth Piffner, Charles and William Rayborn, Mary Resitar, Steve Resitar, Frank and Denise Schilling, Anne Sherman, the Sterling family, Andrew and Irene Seesock, Sonny and Aaron Seesock, Paul and Julia Seesock, Harry Wilder, and Doris Yent. Today's readings invite us to reflect on our own ability to recognize the Lord Jesus and God's prophets in our midst. We remember that God's message is often mitigated in human experience, and fear should not stop us from paying attention to the Spirit's whispers and nudges. Please stand and join us in singing our opening hymn, number 567, Holy, 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 number 567. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Often our Lord reveals his message of salvation in new and different ways. He speaks to us through the voice of prophets. For the times that we fail to listen to these prophetic voices in our midst, we pause and ask our Lord for his mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy, Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy, Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. Christ, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. Kyrie 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks. For your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of will. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Heart of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. To you have I lifted up my eyes, you who dwell in our heavens. Behold, like the eyes of slaves on the hand of their lords. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Like the eyes of a servant 
on the hand of her mistress. So our eyes are on the Lord our God, till he show us his mercy. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. We are filled with contempt. Indeed, all too full is our soul with the scorn of the arrogant, the disdain of the proud. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Tidings to the poor. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place, and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people, by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
With all the clergy up here, you would think the Pope is celebrating Mass this weekend, right? Uh, But regardless, it's a privilege for me to introduce, to welcome our new parochial vicar here with us today, Father Paul Gross. Father Paul is a native of Baton Rouge, the city itself. Uh, We were contemporaries of each other in the seminary, so I'm sure blackmail stories could be available for purchase uh, immediately after Mass today. Uh, But regardless, most recently he was assigned over to St. George Parish in Baton Rouge. Um, Don't tell the St. George people we take all their associate pastors, apparently, but uh, it's a privilege to have him here, and let's welcome him here with us at St. Margaret this weekend. Father Jamie, you stole my thunder. Good afternoon. afternoon, Certainly, as as Father Jamin so graciously introduced me, uh, it's a joy, it's an honor, it's a privilege to be assigned here at St. Margaret and uh, just coming in and celebrating Mass, beginning Mass and hearing you sing gave me so much joy in my heart, right? So I'm glad to be here, glad to be here. One of the interesting things about myself or one of the um, aspects of my priesthood that I like to do is I like to pray before I preach. Uh, a Hail Mary. And the reason why I do that is because the Mass is heaven on earth. And so this church is full of angels right now. We don't see them, but they're present. The saints, and especially Our Lady is here with us, every one of us. And so I ask for her intercession because the Father, Heavenly Father, wants to speak to his children. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you But oftentimes our heart's not open to hear. And so we ask Our Lady to open our hearts through the power of the Holy Spirit, that whatever words may come through me, they may touch you in in an individual, unique way. And so I invite us to do that, okay? So let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady loves every one of you. Please know that. Please know that. You know, coming to a new parish is a little bit like a first date, you know? So you're giving your first homily, and first date, if you've been on those when you were in high school, maybe kind of awkward, right? A little bit like, what is this? person about, right? Putting on your best front. You want to make good impressions, those kind of things. You know, I have to laugh because I haven't been here but less than a week, so I'm really getting to know the community here at St. Margaret. But the first two questions that were asked me when I got here was, Father, do you like sweets? (laughs) This is the first impression. Father, do you like to drink? What do you like to drink? What do you like to drink? And I'm assuming, assuming that wasn't cold drinks or soda. So I'm not going to answer any one of those questions because Father Jamin will tell you, if I did, we'd have truckloads of that backing up to the rectory of whatever I would say. And we have plenty of both in the rectory, Okay. <laughs> So I'm not going to answer that question. But just a little bit about me. To be honest with you, I, I, I don't want to speak about myself. I'd rather speak about Jesus. That's why you're here. Not to hear about Father Paul, but to hear about Jesus. That's why we come to Mass. That's why we hear the Word of God, to draw closer to Him. But a little bit about me. Um, as Father Jamin said, I'm a contemporary with him in seminary. Uh, Twelve years, a priest now this past May, a, Uh, a native of Baton Rouge, born and raised in Baton Rouge, cradle Catholic, um, went to Catholic school uh, all of my life. And uh, one thing I always do need to mention, though, my last name, it's actually pronounced Gross, so the S is pronounced. I know I'm in South Louisiana, and the French pronunciation is Gros, right? But I'm German. I come from a German background, so we actually use the S. But I know I'm in South Louisiana, and you're probably going to say Father Grow anyway, or Father Paul Grow. And so I forgive you ahead of time. It's okay. It's okay. So I know uh, I'm in a Hungarian community here, and so many of your last names are probably often mispronounced as well. So mine as well, you know, oftentimes. But um, so that's just a little bit about me. You can read more about me in the bulletin. Um, I'll get it. You'll get a chance to know me 
uh, however long the bishop desires me to be here, and I'll get a chance to know you as well. But let's talk about Jesus. He's more important than me as well. So, you know, I sat down a couple days ago to read this gospel, and I had to laugh at myself, right? Because here's Jesus coming and giving his first homily, right? And it's not received very well. And I'm like, Lord, what does this mean? <laughs> you know? He's, the Lord's got a sense of humor that he would give me this, this reading to preach on as my, first, as my first homily. But Jesus is rejected. He's not accepted. And why? Why was he not accepted in the gospel? This is Mark chapter 6. It's because the people there thought they knew him. They were too familiar with him. Isn't this the carpenter's son, right? We know his kin, right? This is not his, his blood brothers and sisters. I could, that's a whole nother homily. But this would be like his cousins, distant cousins, or close relatives, his kin. We know his kin. He's the son of carpenter. He's the son of the carpenter. He's the son of Mary. We know him. And so St. Saint Mark says that they took offense at him. In other words, the Greek word there is he became a stumbling block to them because they had heard about Jesus, and here he is showing up, preaching the word, performing, hearing about these mighty deeds, and they can't reconcile the two because they knew him as a child. And most likely, he had a normal childhood. He was just a carpenter. He lived the life as everybody in the town. Probably Mary and Joseph were the only ones that knew his origin. And so they have this experience of Jesus, and at the same time, here he is coming back, presenting himself as a prophet, performing these mighty deeds, and they can't reconcile the two. And then St. Mark says this, and this is daunting. He goes on to say, he was not, Jesus was not able to perform any mighty deed there. The Son of God was unable to perform any mighty deeds because the people there became too familiar, too complacent. They thought they knew who Jesus was, but they didn't know the whole Jesus. And so Jesus was unable to affect their lives in a positive way, in an, a powerful way, I should say. You know, it kind of reminds us a little bit about us as well. See, what happens to us, especially if you're a cradle Catholic like me, if you went to 12 years of Catholic school or 12 years of PSR and you've done all that, you've done the classes, you've been confirmed. Oh, I know my Catholic faith. I know, I know Jesus is a nice guy. Like, yeah, he's cool, you know, like he teaches us to love our neighbor, those kind of things, to be a nice person, we'll go to heaven. And what happens is we become a little bit complacent, a little bit too familiar with our Catholic faith. And it prohibits Jesus from really affecting our lives in a radical way, in a powerful way. Because we become too familiar. We think we know everything there is to know about Jesus. I kind of know the Gospels a little bit. I've read them. I heard of them at Mass. But the fact of the matter is, is that Jesus wants to affect our lives in a powerful way, not just one time where we had maybe a conversion experience, but he wants to affect our lives every day of our life until the day we die. There's something for us that he desires to draw us closer to him, to know him more, to know something about ourselves, whether it be about maybe the sin in our life that's keeping us closer to heaven or about his mercy. But sometimes we can fall into a rut like the people in the gospel today, right? Oh, we know who this guy is. And so God was unable to affect their lives. And I can imagine these people, you know, a couple years down the road, when they hear about the crucifixion of Jesus and his resurrection, 
And all of a sudden, the apostles are coming around, and they're preaching, they're performing these mighty deeds in the name of Jesus. I can see they're probably kicking themselves. Oh, my goodness. This was God. This was the Messiah. And we missed out. We missed out in that moment because we thought we knew everything about him. We were too familiar. We were too complacent. See, my dear friends, let that not be us. Look, I, I, I tend, I hope I know Jesus. I hope. I seem to know him pretty well, but there is so much more that the Lord wants to show me about him. And the same is true for you as well. If you don't even know him, maybe, he wants, to get you, he wants you to get to know him. Trust me. Trust me. Then, when we ask the Lord to come into our hearts, he can perform mighty deeds, powerful works. He can affect us in a very radical way. And that's what he wants to do. So, my dear friends, let us not become too familiar with our faith. Let us not become too complacent with what God has given us, lest we too become like the people today in the gospel who St. Mark says he was unable to perform any mighty deed there because they thought they knew Jesus and they didn't know him. So may God bless you all and may God be with you. Amen. United in our love for our Savior, together we profess the prayer of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have faith in who Jesus is, and we have listened to God's word. Let us now turn to God with all of our prayers of petition. For the church, Pope Francis, Francis, Bishop Duca, and all clergy, for strength of faith to preach the gospel and serve as an agent of reconciliation for all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country to cherish the heritage of religious freedom in our land, may our citizens be led by a desire to serve the common good and not selfish interest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill and for those suffering with COVID, as well as protection of caregivers and frontline staff, may God encourage and restore them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work on behalf of social justice, may their prophetic voices find a willing response from our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For protection from storms during the ravages of this hurricane season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, 
May they dwell forever with their creator. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in silence through Christ, who strengthens us by our weaknesses for our own needs and for the needs of others. God, in your marvelous plan for our salvation, you have revealed your love for us by the prophets and in the person of Jesus, your son. Renew our faith and help us to bear witness to you with our lives. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as a reminder, today's second collection will be for our building and maintenance fund. Please be generous. Our offertory hymn is number 777, Here I Am, Lord, number 777. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full Full of your glory, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Mm. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Margaret, St. Thomas, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom, and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Not the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of the power and the glory of now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are this called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing number 930, Taste and See. Number nine, three, zero. God 
countenance of the Lord would taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, 